Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, I want to talk about why I switched to Next.js. I mean, I love every framework, at least if it's React. I love React. I love React Router, Tanstack, Remix. I love Astro. I love all those frameworks. But I started running into issues, not so much with the actual frameworks that I'm using, but when maintaining applications, I realized that I spread myself too thin. I was working on too many different projects, using too many different paradigms. And the reason why I decided to switch to Next.js, not because it's the best framework, because I think there's other frameworks that for your use case might be better. And that's where I wanna start. You need to treat every framework by not how cool it is, but does it help you to be more productive and does it make sense for the project that you're building? So a lot of the projects that I build, they're more informational websites. They're either business websites, they're either LMS websites or any website that has some functionality for the user to log in, view their content, very basic. They're not applications. They're like LMS platforms, e-commerce websites, business websites, marketing websites. And I realized by building and using other technologies that were cool at the time, the mistake that I made is that with all the new bleeding edge applications, things evolve so quickly that sometimes maintaining your previous applications becomes a pain in the butt. Or if you want somebody else to help you or do PRs, I decided that I want to pick something that is popular, somewhat opinionated, and everybody knows it, right? Most people, they know what Next.js is. There's a lot of documentation and a lot of opportunity to find help. And the reason why I decided to switch to Next.js, because in my job, most of the projects that I maintain, they happen to be Next.js. So building something in a different framework almost to me doesn't make sense because if I'm already working with a lot of Next.js applications, going on and building something else that I need to maintain using a different framework, it's not that it's impossible or hard. It's the fact that it's too much context switching. Like React frameworks, they're not that much different, but they do have their own quirks. And so what I decided, I decided to stop fighting myself, working and maintaining all these different applications that are built either with Remix or Tanstack. I just decided anything that's in production for now, I'm just gonna use Next.js. It's simple to deploy, fairly opinionated. Once you know how to do certain thing in Next, you just stick to doing it that way. And so let me tell you how I got here. So if you've been following this YouTube channel, I created a platform that I wanted to use as my LMS. And at the time, Remix 1 was a thing. And then I knew Remix 2 was going to come out, so I kind of used all the future flags and I built this application using uh, Remix 2. And come to find out, now Remix 2 is not a thing. Well, it is a thing, but now they recommend that you use React Router. And then I had to figure out, do I wanna use React with React Router or do I wanna use React Router 7 as a framework? And I'm not saying that would be impossible. I don't think the migration of this application would be that difficult to migrate it to React Router, but I realized that I don't use React Router on the day-to-day -day basis. Majority of the applications that I work with, they're Next.js. So for me to have another framework that I have to focus on and maintain, at least the one that I wanna use in production, I decided that I just want things to be simpler and easier. And so what I did is I took this project and you could still find the code for the old repo. I'll make sure if anyone's interested, I'll share it in the description below. But what I did, I started to migrate that project to use Next.js 15. So this doesn't look as pretty. It's still work in progress. Also because of Tailwind 4 coming out and ChatCN UI not quite supports Tailwind 4 yet completely. I guess there's workarounds. But anyway, I went ahead and I redid this website or I'm in the process of redoing it to use Next.js. And to me, that brought peace of mind because now anything that I need to do in this application, it is using Next.js. I use Next.js at work predominantly. And so I'm sticking in one framework. And so I could just focus on getting better at doing things with Next.js 
try to get deeper into how things work, but also at the same time, like there's less things for me to work about. So I made a rule for myself for production apps, unless there's a specific reason because a different framework would make more sense than using Next for the websites that I make. Next.js is it, and this is what I'm doing. And by the way, you could check out this website. I'm gonna get back to recording courses. You'll be able to sign in, and then you'll be able to view some of the courses that I'm doing. And of course, I'm going to write courses on the frameworks that I like, but predominantly for a lot of the applications that I built, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on Next.js. And what I decided, instead of trying to constantly build new projects with different frameworks, I'm gonna create a playground where I could explore all those other frameworks where I could do it without any pressure of having to maintain them, just not to create headaches. Because when building applications, and by the way, I added a new section here called topics. So you could add topics for the type of content you want me to make on this YouTube channel. So you could go test it out, see if it works. I also like to make stupid music. I created a little section here where I could post some of the music I made. I don't think anybody would like my music, but I just wanted, and then I also added a block section. I'll talk more about how I build this project, but this is basically just a, my old project that I started for maintaining my lessons that I wanted to build for this YouTube channel that you could access for free. And now it's built with Next.js, deploy number cell. I'll also go ahead and share the link to this application in the description below. So you could take a look at your repos. One cool thing that I'm gonna say, so the backend is powered by Strapi. And so if you take a look at this Remix application that's live right now, and you take a look at the Next.js application that's live right now, like all the data, it's coming back from my Strapi application. And one of the things I was gonna say that made this migration super easy, I didn't have to migrate my backend because I just have two frontend as backend, backend as frontend, or however cool kids are now saying, but I used to have my Remix application that was pulling data from that same Strapi instance. And when I needed to migrate it, I didn't have to touch the backend. I literally just created a new application using Next.js and pointed to my API, which is kind of cool. So I still am big believer. Although you can build application with Next.js and have your API, I think for me personally, I want to always keep my API and my front end separate from each other because it just makes it easy to work. But anyway, I just wanted to make this quick video to kind of show you, hey, um, Using Next.js more predominantly, the reason why is because I just wanna make my life easier. I'm able to maintain the application that's in production. I don't have to worry, like obviously Next.js introduces changes and people sometimes like, ah, what are you doing for self? But the point is I wanna make sure that I stick to one main thing that for me makes sense and allows me to have easier time maintaining all the applications I built. With that being said, by the way, what I'm going to start doing as a side project if I could remember what I call this repo, I think I called it frameworks. I can't believe I can't remember what I called it. And I don't also don't like the fact this doesn't show the most recent projects. Okay, so I have this repo called React Framework Strapi Example. And so this is going to be my playground and um, you could find it by going to my GitHub. It's I just created it recently, but basically this is where I'm going to test out all those other frameworks that I like, but I don't have the pressure of having something that's deployed that I'm using for a project that I actually care about that I need to maintain. And so again, the reason why I'm doing Next.js is because I already work with a lot of Next.js projects and I don't want things to change as much with all the different changes that are happening. And for the type of websites I make, Next.js makes perfect sense. And that's why I'm doing it. But I did create this playground repo that I'm gonna start working on where I'm going to explore Astro, obviously build more things with Next, React Router in as a framework, React and Vite, where it's basically React app, it is what it is. I have my Strapi API and of course, tan stack start. And so the frameworks that I want to explore, I'm not going to use new bleeding edge frameworks to build new projects and then deploy them and then have headaches. Why things change? Because when something is new or something that maybe is new to you, you should wait before building it in production before you played with it enough to feel confident that you could easily deploy it, fix things, as they break or as new changes get introduced. I hope this video made sense, but I just wanted to share with you kind of like one of the pains that I had is when you start 
building applications on a lot of different frameworks and you start deploying them and having other people start using them. And when things change, you're basically like, I need to update this Astro app. I need to update this React um, router app. I decided, you know what? Unless there's a specific reason to use a specific framework, I'm going to stick with Next.js. I know there's a lot of people that die on the hill. Like I love Remix. I love React Router 7. I love Tanstack. I love all of them. But realistically, because I 80% of the projects that I work with at work are Next.js, it makes sense for me from the standpoint of staying kind of in the same context from this ability to kind of living in that Next.js land from deployment, from building things, from you know, being able to spin up things faster. And to me, it's just purely for saving time and the projects that I built. If someone said for me, like, hey, we need a mobile app, obviously I would not use Next.js. If someone said to me, I need a web app that's gonna have a lot of data and crazy dashboard, I would not use Next.js for that. But for type of websites that I built, this is the fit for me. And if this video made zero sense or not, or you think I'm completely wild, because I am, let me know in the comments your suggestions and your ideas. But I think if I had to take this rant and to break it down based on the requirements that you have for work that you do, you have to understand that it's not just building the project, but it's maintaining the project long haul. So yes, you could try all these different frameworks, but what I would say, pick the one that you have the most confidence, knowing that you'll be able to keep it updated and maintained. And you also have the trust in that framework that's built by somebody else that they're doing updates accordingly and the chances of introducing breaking changes, it's not as frequent as you're not able to stomach. Obviously, no matter what app you use, it's going to have different uh, changes that are introduced to it that will break things. That's part of being a developer. But at the same time, for me, I wanna make sure that I make my life a little bit easier. And some people will say, what a cop out, you should just improve skill issues. But at the point when you have an application in production, part of the Odin's is maintaining the application and making sure that you're able to fix and update things easily. And because 80% of my time is already spent in Next.js land, that's where I'm going to kind of stay and focus for the moment, unless there's a specific reason where I need to use something else. Now, with that being said, am I going to not make Astro tutorials or uh, React Router tutorials uh, or, you know, Tan Sector? I'm going to make all of those, except they're not going to be applications that I deploy to production and have users complain to me when a change happens and I break something. I'm going to stick to Next.js because it is what it is. And with that being said, that there's a reason why some people love Laravel. Some people love you, and that's the space that they spend majority of their time. But what I'm saying, don't pick a framework because it's cool, but pick a framework because A, you're very proficient in it. Two, you feel like you'll be able to maintain the project easily and it's going to have least amount of changes or updates that could potentially break it. Anyway, that was my rant for today. I will try to stream. I'm trying to get back to streaming on Sundays, 11 a.m. God, please help me to allow me to do that. It's just been really hard to find time in my schedule. But I just wanted to quickly just make this uh, update in terms of what I'm doing. And more importantly, show you, hey, I'm back at building my coding after 30 website. Mostly I wanted to say, hey, I'm back. I'm trying to make sure that I stay on top of my website where you could see some of the lessons where not only do you see the YouTube video, but you also see the notes that make it very helpful when you're trying to follow along. And also because it's open source project, you could always go to the repo and you could create feature requests or, or if you want to, you could do PRs and you could help me build it uh, with you. And with that being said, I just want to show the last feature. I just want to see A, if people made it this far in the video and B, I would love to have you recommend some topics. At the moment, the upload button doesn't work. So clicking it won't help you. Well, you have to sign in first, but after you sign in, if you go back to topics, you're going to see that we have an upload button that currently doesn't work. That's a feature that I'm going to work on next, but at least I want you to uh, add your topics here of things that you want me to create on this YouTube channel. And some of the things that I want to work on next is I want to redo my uh, Strappy crash course, which I did Strappy 4 on my YouTube channel, which had over 70,000 K views. So I'm going to make another series. And I do want to talk about more about uh, computer science and 
with AI and everything that is happening, why you should try to use AI to be more productive faster so you could have more time to improve your computer science um, study, basically diving into deeper topics that allow you to grow as a developer that goes beyond the junior level or the mid level. So use AI to be more productive, to build things faster and help you to free up that time that you could use to focus on learning more complex topics. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Thanks so much. And I will see you in the next one.